All right. So that's not a photo of me up in the top uh, left hand corner. Um, but the gentleman, what I'd like to talk about is, you know, retirement, you know, income planning, you know, um, what types of, you know, when you're approaching retirement and, and even building towards that, building your retirement investments, you know, some important things to keep in mind and planning. And this gentleman right here, William Bengen, uh, he's the father of the 4% rule. And he was a retired financial advisor. I believe he was in California, but he was born and raised in Brooklyn, an MIT grad, and did a lot of studies, you know, um, taking a look at what different types of portfolios, you know, how they react during different market cycles. And what is the safe amount that you should withdraw from your portfolio in retirement to make sure that your money doesn't run out, you know, it doesn't run to zero. So this is good for your planning. You know, you're always trying to put money aside and grow money, but how much could you expect to get from that in retirement? How much income is going to be generated? And he came up with this rule based on a portfolio, you know, like a moderate portfolio, which is 50% stock, you know, like Amazon, you know, AT&T, Verizon, Boeing, you know, uh, U.S. stock, and 50% bonds, fixed income. And bonds and fixed income, is, in a sense, is lending money to corporations that pay you interest. And at some point, whether 10, 15, or 20 year maturities, they pay you back their principal that you gave them, hopefully. So he came up with the rule, they call it the 4% rule, because that was the safe assumed rate that you should be able to pull from that portfolio and not have it go to zero and run out of money when you're in retirement and have to go back to work. And um, now BlackRock took that study and expanded on a little bit, showing what, using that same portfolio, you know, a, not an aggressive, not a super conservative, that's a moderate portfolio, 50-50, and pulling, you know, different rates of return, you know, out of that portfolio. And what you'll see here in that red line, or orange, kind of looks like, that's a 4% withdrawal. So they started with a $500,000 portfolio, it could be any number, and they were drawing 4% per year, which is $20,000. and 20 years later, you know, the portfolio is still intact. Although you see some pretty good dips here. This is the 2000, the dot-com bust right there. And right here also, you know, 2008 and the bottoms in 2009, you know, that, uh, you know, financial crisis we had here. So you saw a major decline, even with that 4% rate of withdrawal. Now what's really important here, right? You got to stay the course you know, working with a financial advisor or having investments that you feel comfortable, that you don't run for the exits. Because if you ran for the exits at this point right here, you wouldn't have wrote it back up and you your money would be running to zero. Because in a sense, what we're saying is if you're taking 4% of 500,000, which is $20,000, but when you have a big dip like this, where your account fell under 400 to like say 350 and you're still taking that $20,000 per year, your withdrawal rate at that point has, has jumped significantly up to six, six plus percent. So what they've done is they've looked at different withdrawal rates, like this yellow line is 5% and a tremendous difference in what happens to your money over just this 20 year time span from taking 4% compared to 5%. 5%, just 25% more income taken from the same portfolio, the account basically got cut in half from 500 to around 250. 6% didn't make it the full 20 years. That account went to zero, seven and eight died, you know, died much sooner. So obviously, you know, 4%, the lower rate you can pull from the portfolio, the better. Now MFS kind of expanded on that. And what they did is they looked at the different types of withdrawal rates, and you can see them right here, 4%, 5%, 6, 7 and 8 but using different types of portfolios, you know, looking at it, if you're a super conservative, and unfortunately many clients when they retire in their 60s and 70s get very conservative because they can't go back to work. They don't wanna go back to work to replenish, put money back into their account that they lost in the market. So, you know, if they're very super conservative, conservative and they're all bonds, you know, historically, they found that you only had a 35% chance of that account staying staying intact and surviving over a 30-year period. If you just add stocks, only 
and still kept 75% bonds, significant jump. You went from a 35% probability to an 80% probability of success, a significant jump. But if you just went up from 5% withdrawal to a 4% to five, a significant drop off. So obviously 4% is really the safer rate of return to take from the portfolio. But as you add more stocks to the portfolio, like even here, 50-50, a significant, huge jump up. You're now well into the 90s to 100% you know, probability that your portfolio will stay intact. Now, that's either, easier said than done to have someone who's much older, very conservative, worried about the market, to move away from fixed income bonds that they feel are far more safer to get into something more risky, you know, like stocks. Another major factor to keep in mind, this study right here is back over 30 years. Fixed interest rates were a lot higher. So the bonds in these portfolios were earning a lot more yield. Today, it's half that. It's half that. So if you were to run it based on today's interest rates, these numbers with these bond portfolios probably wouldn't look so good. So it's very, very important, you know, to not just look at your traditional stock and bond, but look at other ways to provide protection, which I talk about all the time. And there's many different ways to provide protection while you get a little more into equities with a little more upside. So moving a portfolio from here, from the 75-25 to a 50-50 would have a significant you know, impact on your overall investments and keeping your money intact and making sure you're not gonna run out of money. But there are many different systems and tools and investment options available to you to mitigate these risks. But it's very, very important for you to understand you know, what you need to get to and understand what all your options are. Now, we talk about, you know, how it's important to get more equity, to get more growth in your portfolio, but, you know, obviously more conservative clients, older clients are really worried and it makes sense because, you know, your holding periods in the market matters. Um, this is a chart that was, uh, I got from Bloomberg, but done by Richard uh, Bernstein and Associates or Advisors that they did a study and what they found is that when you invest in the stock market, like the S&P 500, the largest 500 uh, publicly traded US companies, over five year periods, look at rolling five year periods, 20% of the time you lose money, but 80% of the time you make money, but 20%, one in five, you know, five year holding periods, you're gonna lose money. If you go, if you double that, go to 10 years, a decade, you know, that time helps and it significantly drops your probability of loss down to 10%, but still one in 10. And, you know, that's hard, hard pill for some elderly, more conservative investors to swallow, you know, to take on that risk at that point in their life. And why that's so important. I love this chart by BlackRock. This, is, this chart shows, you know, what it takes to make up lost ground, you know? So if sure, you're- Two minutes. Oh, okay, I'll speed it up. If you had $100,000 in the market and you lost, the market went down 10%, it takes an 11% gain to make up a 10% loss. But in 08, the market from 08 to the bottom of 09 dropped like 50%. It took a 100% gain to make up a 50% loss. That's significant. That's a lot of ground to make up. So when you use investments or options, that provides some downside protection, like say, like a 25% downside protection where the investment absorbs the first 25% loss. So here, if the market was down 17.5%, you'd be down zero. But if the market happens, you know, be down 35%, which is a big downdraft, that's a big downturn, you'd be down 10 because they would absorb the first 25%. Now, you don't want to be down 10%, but it's a hell of a lot better than being down 35%. And the major impact is that person who had that protection, the market's down 35%. They only need the market to come back 11% to get back to whole. That person who was down 35% needs like a 55% rate of return to get back to whole. That's a huge difference. That person who had that protection, now when the market comes back 35%, gets back to where it was, they're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. AXA also did a study showing what downside protections, different options, you know, uh, help you. And I showed you that chart that over five year periods, you have a 20% probability of loss historically. But when you add a 20% downside buffer, you reduce 
that 20% probability of loss. And in this chart, they show you the success rate. Instead of 20% probability of loss, you reduce it down to, um, you know, like 1.9%, uh, you know, significant. If you have a 30% buffer, you reduce it to 0.3%. Significant change. Sorry, I gotta put some disclaimers up here. Significant difference in the overall portfolio. So ultimately what I'm saying is by understanding all your options and looking at ways to protect yourself and provide some downside protection that I always talk about, you're able to adjust, you know, maybe tweak the portfolio to be a little more aggressive to shoot for far greater returns and a greater probability of keeping your money intact and, and providing you with the proper amount of income to live on in retirement without at some point in life having to say, hey, I got to go back to work to put you know, to make up for losses. And with that, I had to throw up some disclaimers, you know, that uh, in this industry, throw up, so I apologize. But uh, <laughs> this is for informational purposes only. There are many different options and ways to provide protection. I'd love to talk to you about them, you know, in a one-on-one. -on -one. Or if you have an advisor that you just love and you don't want to leave, that's probably a great thing to bring up and talk to them about. I hear the timer. There you go. Well timed. Awesome. We we have time for a quick question. Somebody jump up if you have a question, Casey. George, uh, I, I love that four percent chart, and it makes it very simple. Um, it looked like it was over the past twenty years. Would that we've had a, a heck of a market for the past ten or so years? Um, do, do you think that that four percent chart would also hold up for you know a forty year period or a fifty year period? I think it would do very well because the markets still were in the historical averages, you know, where the S and P, you know, yeah, we're right now we're in the high side. My okay. fear by going back further, you have higher interest rates. So that would help the bond component of those portfolios. My fear is going forward. You can't count on those rates. You know, that's my okay. bigger fear, not the equity side. In okay. fact, right. because of these low rates, it's pushing equities even higher, you know, and that's right. the dynamic. That's really what I really wanted to, you know, bring out today. You know, that's a huge challenge in the future. Great stuff, George. Thank you. Yeah, George, thanks very much. And guys, um, if you haven't met with George, um, do so. Very interesting fellow. Um, he knows his stuff cold. Um, always good to have a, a time to sit down and talk.